Okay, so let's see if you have the counting skills to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. You have four pants, three shoes, five shirts. How many more outfits can you make if you buy one more of each? Okay, so that's the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. And then we're going to talk about how to solve a problem like this using two specific counting techniques in mathematics. Um, actually, counting is a big part and a sophisticated part of math. Uh, so if you always kind of thought, well, is counting, uh, you know, basically just one, two, three, four. In other words, counting maybe how many fingers we're holding up in any one particular time. Well, yes, that's the basic concept of counting, but counting, again, gets much more interesting in math as you're going to see in this particular uh, problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the question again. So in our wardrobe, we have uh, four pairs of pants, three shoes, five shirts, and we want to construct uh, these unique outfits. But how many more outfits can we make if we add one more of these items, and i.e. we get um, one more uh, pants, shoes, and shirts into our wardrobe. How many more exciting clothing outfits can we make? Well, the answer is 60. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving a nice little happy face an A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of counting. Now, a lot of people are not going to be impressed with that because they're going to say, well, listen, I can count too, one, two, three, four. Well, that yes, indeed, that is counting. But this type of problem in math is what we call a counting problem. And counting problems can get very, very interesting uh, very quickly. Okay, so this particular problem, I think it's going to be a nice kind of uh, introduction to some really important concepts. But a lot of you... Um, could have figured this out uh, by all sorts of creative ways. Maybe you went to your closet and you're like, all right, let me go ahead and pull out some uh, shirts and pants and some shoes and let's just kind of see how many <laughs> you know, outfits I can make. So that's fantastic. If you figured this out in some creative way, well, uh, that is excellent, okay? Because you should never give up on a math problem. There's all different sorts of ways to figure out um, solutions to math problems. But in this particular problem, I want to teach you uh, some really important concepts if you don't know them already. Okay, so here is our problem. Of course, it's a math problem. Always use the rule of three when you're dealing with any sort of problem uh, in mathematics, particularly a word problem, and that is to read the question at least three times uh, before you start to do anything. Now, in this particular um, a problem, we have to really make sure we understand the question, right? Because the question's kind of embedded in the middle of the question, or the question is in the middle of the actual question, the question, well, what's being asked, rather, right? So uh, we have these pants, shoes, and shirts, and the, and the particular thing that we're trying to solve for is how many more outfits can we make, okay, if we add one more to each. So we're going to have to determine how many outfits we can make with just these closing items, and then how many outfits we can make if we add one more to each of these items, and then, of course, we'll find the difference. So that's basically uh, the basic logic that we have to take in order to figure this question out. Now, uh, sometimes in math, okay, uh, you always, well, not sometimes, as a matter of fact, let me correct that, almost always you want to try to model or visualize the problem. So let's just make sure we understand what an outfit is. We'll just kind of by definition here. Uh, so here we have these shirts, pants, and shoes. So one outfit is, hey, we're going to just select one clothing item, right? So we're going to put on one shirt. We're going to grab one a pant, one of the pants. We're going to put those on. And then we're going to grab a pair of shoes, and that's it, right? So we're not going to put on two shirts, nothing like that. So we're talking about unique outfits. Okay, so how many unique outfits, uh, different combinations, can we make 
from uh, five shirts, four pants, and three shoes? Well, we're going to have to answer that question, but um, before we answer that question, let's answer a simpler question, okay? In other words, let's um, do a uh, kind of a easier version of this problem, okay? Because if we understand the easier uh, version of this problem, then, you know, we'll have the techniques and methods to um, uh, solve the main problem. All right, so let's talk about two shirts, two pants, and three shoes, because this could be much more manageable for those of you that want to, you know, kind of grab some clothing items from uh, your closet. So let's just see how many unique outfits we can make with uh, two shirts, two pants, and three shoes. Okay, so in mathematics, you basically can approach a problem like this. This is a counting problem, right? So the question is how many? Okay, so how many means what? Well, we're saying how many uh, cars do you see? Okay, so here is a vehicle and here is another vehicle. If I'm saying how many, well, what am I asked to do? Well, I'm asked to count, right? Oh, I see one and two cars, right? So here, if I'm asking how many outfits, this is, you know, we're talking about a counting problem. So you got to be able to recognize those, uh, these type of problems in math. But once you are dealing with a counting problem, there's typically two ways you can solve these problems, okay? Now, the first is uh, something called a tree diagram, okay? I want to show you an example of this in a second. And then we have this thing called the fundamental counting principle, okay? So we're going to talk about both of these. And this uh, principle right here is extremely important in mathematics, and you'll see why. It's going to make our life really easy. But first, let's go ahead and uh, count by using a tree diagram. All right, so again, we're going to figure out uh, we have two shirts, two pants, and three shoes. How many outfits can we make? Well, let's go down here and just kind of construct something real quick. So we have two shirts. We're, let's just grab one of the shirts. We'll call that shirt one. Okay, so we have shirt one. We have two pants. Okay, so we'll grab one uh, pants. So let's say uh, we'll call that pants one. All right, so with this shirt and this first uh, pants right there, pants one, then we have uh, these uh, shoes. We have three shoes, right? So let's go back and make sure. Okay, yes, we have three shoes. So we can have this shirt, this pants, and then we have this pair of shoes, or we could have this one or this one. So along this tree diagram, this is what we call a tree because, you know, these are like branches. Uh, this is a unique outfit, okay? So in other words, we can have this shirt, this pants, these shoes right here. Maybe these are sneakers. Uh, maybe these are dress shoes, sandals, whatever the case. But this is one outfit, okay? Now here, we can have this shirt, same pants, but these shoes, that's another outfit, or these shoes, that's another outfit. So we can just kind of go through this um, uh, variations of different combinations, and you can see from this shirt, if we select that shirt, okay, we can um, over here select the other pair of pants, and then of course we have our different options of shoes. So with this shirt, shirt one, okay, there's six outfits we could construct, six unique outfits. Well, if that's the case, well, how about if we use the other shirt? Well, we're going to go through the same thing, right? So now we have a different shirt, but we're going to end up with six unique uh, outfits with the other shirt as well. Okay, so how many total outfits can we make with two shirts, two pants, and three shoes? Well, six outfits and six outfits. So it looks like we can make 12 total outfits from two shirts, two pants, and three shoes. So let's take a look at this pattern here. Okay, we have two, two, and three. Well, if we can get, make uh, 12 total outfits, two times two times three, two times two is four, four times three is 12. So it appears that instead of making this tree diagram, we just multiply all these things together and we would have had the right answer. And some of you were probably uh, thinking in these terms, but how will you, you know, how can you be um, really certain that in fact, um, you know, you're doing this right? Well, you can verify it by using a tree diagram, right? But we're gonna get into something really important right now, and that is called the fundamental counting principle. And this right here, okay, what we just determined, two times two times three, right? We could uh, select uh, two shirts, okay? How many shirts could we select? Well, we have two options. How many pants? We have two options. And how many shoes? We have three options. So the total amount of combinations we can make with those options is 12. Okay, 
Well, this is effectively an example of something called the fundamental counting principle. And here it is. I'll go and read it to you. Uh, it says, if one event can occur in M uh, ways. So one event is like how many uh, ways can you select uh, your uh, shirts you're going to wear? Well, that event, when you go to select um, a shirt to, to wear, right, can happen in two ways. How many ways can you select uh, the pants? Well, that can happen in two ways. And how many ways can you select your shoes? That can happen in three ways. So back to the fundamental counting principle, it says if one event can occur in M ways and another event can occur in, can occur in N ways, then the number of ways that both events can occur is equal to M times N. So if that's a little bit confusing, uh, don't be too confused by it because effectively what it means is that we can count the total amount of ways uh, we can construct an outfit by simply just multiplying our options. Okay. Now, uh, if you are a little bit confused, I understand that. And, you know, you're probably going to want to do more of these type of prompts if you are taking some sort of class that involves counting. But uh, again, at least you're aware that we have tree diagrams and we have this thing called the fundamental counting principle. OK, so now we have everything we need to put, uh, you know, to put to work to solve the original problem, because now we have a way to count. And instead of making a tree diagram, because think about it. Uh, we have uh, more shirts and pants and shoes so our um, in our original prompt. So if you make a tree diagram uh, with our original prompt, it's going to be a lot more, right? So in other words, we're going to have a lot more branches. And that's why we want to have another option to do a problem like this, like the fundamental counting principle. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is to listen to my little tiny commercial here. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is if you are not a subscriber, if you would consider subscribing, it is a great way to show, uh, show support for what I do. And what I try to do is really just teach as many people who need help in math as possible, okay? Uh, and if you know people relate to my teaching style or my instruction, then I want to reach those folks and you know uh, really help them in math, okay? I'm passionate about helping people that are having a tough time in math, okay? So by you subscribing, it really does help that YouTube algorithm push out my content and maybe I can connect with other people. But you know, the one thing I uh, think about, and right now I'm pretty fortunate I think right now I have uh, 509,000 subscribers. I mean, that blows my mind. I have millions of views on my channel. I'm really, really grateful. I've been on YouTube for a long time, but I look at every single subscriber as a new student in my virtual classroom. I'm just trying to get as many people that are interested in math or need help in math in my classroom. So thank you so much. And if you're going to subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell as well. Okay, I got a special announcement here. And uh, for the next uh, week, or up to this date right here, which is uh, Friday, November 10th, 2023, uh, I am offering a 50% off sale off my main courses, which include pre-algebra, algebra, geometry, algebra 2, pre-calculus. Uh, this sale um, I run once in a blue moon, maybe not even every year. So this is my best courses. All these courses have taken me years to construct, but uh, what I do on YouTube is kind of like tutorial videos. But if you really want to learn math from me, like get full comprehensive instruction, these uh, courses here are my best work. So you're going to find uh, links to these courses in the description along with the coupon code. So hopefully some of you out there that uh, you know are thinking about, hey, maybe I do want to you know, uh, get back into math or maybe take a math course from me, this would be a great opportunity to do so. Okay, so now let's go ahead and finish this problem up. And now that we understand the fundamental counting principle, you know, this should be pretty easy, right? So here's the problem. So we have four pants, three shoes, five shirts. So um, how many more outfits can we make if we buy one more of each? Well, it's probably a good idea first to determine how many outfits we can make with our current wardrobe, okay? And this is going to be very, very simple because um, we now have that fundamental counting principle. Okay, so right now we have four uh, pants, three shoes, five shirts. So how many uh, different outfits can we make? Well, it's pretty much just four times three times five. So four times three times five is 60. All right, now, if some of you were like, oh yeah, it's, uh, you know, I just multiply all these numbers together. And, you know, that is, of course, the right thing to do, but you don't want to just be doing something 
and be hoping that you're right. Okay, in other words, you're like, oh, I think this sounds right, or hopefully this is right, but now you know it, indeed it is correct, and you can back it up with the fundamental accounting principle. Okay, so that's how many outfits we can make right now, but what happens if we buy one more of each? Well, our pants go to five pants, okay, our shoes, we got three shoes, that goes to four shoes, and then we have five shirts, it goes to six shirts, so let's go ahead and calculate how many outfits we can make with five pants, four shoes, uh, six shirts, so that's pretty simple. Five times four times six, 120 outfits. All right, so what is the question? We gotta be very careful here, right? So how many more outfits can you make if you buy one more of each? Well, we can make 120 uh, uh, total outfits, but uh, we start off with 60 outfits. So how many uh, more outfits we can we make is just gonna be the difference, right? We can make 60 additional outfits from our original wardrobe. Okay, so hopefully this was an interesting little video. And, uh, you know, some of you out there are like, well, you know, I, I know how to count. Well, I can tell you right now, as you progress in math, okay, especially algebra and more advanced algebra, counting problems get quite sophisticated. And then there's all different sorts of problems like um, combinations and permutations. This is tremendously important in the areas of like probability and statistics. So counting, again, is something that you're definitely going to have to uh, learn if you want to, you know, learn a lot of math. Okay, it's a big part of learning mathematics. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.